In my life, I have come across many people who are in need of healing in their lives. Every day, people are battling sicknesses in their body and also hurts, pains and woundedness in their hearts. The stresses and anxieties of modern day life have also caused many to break down in their bodies, their minds and their health. The solutions of the world can only bring a temporary relief. I know and believe and have seen through my own life that true and lasting health and healing can only come from God through Jesus Christ. We have recorded this CD to bring faith and God's presence into your life so that you can receive the blessing of God's healing in your life and be delivered from any sickness, whether it is cancer, tuberculosis, depression or paralysis or any other sickness. You can listen to this CD on your bed, in the hospital, in your car or even on your mobile phone, wherever you are and let the Word of God bring faith and healing in your life. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. When the Bible says that the Word of God is health to all the flesh, the word health means medicine or a cure. So as you listen to the Word of God, let this CD, let these words be like medicine to your life. Listen to this daily, even as you take your medicines daily, and these words will cause you to be in faith and not in fear or discouragement. Romans 10 verse 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So let these words of God bring faith into your life. I know that hundreds have been delivered and healed through the power of God's word, and I believe it is God's will for you to be healed also. Many Christians live confused whether it is God's will to heal them when they are sick. Some even think that it may be God's will for them to be sick in order for God to teach them some lessons. So when they pray for their healing, there is often no faith and confidence that they will receive. They would pray like this, If it is God's will to heal me, He will. If it is not His will, He won't. There is no faith and certainty in a prayer like that. I want you to listen to these scriptures and let it persuade your heart that it is God's will for you to be healed. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 to 24 And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various disease and torments and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics and he healed them. Matthew chapter 8 verse 2 and 3. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately 
his leprosy was cleansed. Matthew chapter 8, verse 14 to 17. Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Matthew chapter 9, verse 27 to 36. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man, mute and demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled, saying, it was never seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He casts out demons by the ruler of the demons. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. We see here that healing is a part of the gospel of the kingdom. Healing is good news. Matthew chapter 12, verse 15. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, and verses 34 to 36. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat, to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all that surrounding region brought to him all who were sick, and begged him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched it were made perfectly well. Matthew chapter 15, verses 29 to 31. Jesus departed from there, skirted the Sea of Galilee, and went up on the mountain and sat down there. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others. And they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. So the multitude marveled when they saw the mute speaking, the maimed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. We see here, that healing glorifies God. Your healing will glorify God and you can testify of His goodness. Mark chapter 6, verses 53 to 56. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and anchored there. And when they came out of the boat, immediately the people recognized Him, ran through that whole surrounding region, and began to carry about on beds those who were sick to wherever they heard that he was. Wherever he entered into villages, cities, or the country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him 
that they might just touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched him were made well. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Luke chapter 4, verses 40 to 41. When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Luke chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with the crowd of his disciples, and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coasts of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and healed them all. John chapter 10 verse 10 Jesus says, The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mark chapter 16 verses 15 to 20 says, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We see in these scriptures that Jesus is the will of God in action. This means that every action and every word and every deed that Jesus did, he revealed to man the will of God. So by his healing, Jesus reveals the will of God that healing is God's will. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, Jesus, being the brightness of His glory, meaning God's glory, and the express image of His person, the express image of God, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The Bible says that Jesus is the express image of the person of God. In other words, if you see Jesus, you have seen God. And we see Jesus in the Gospels. And in the Gospels, Jesus reveals God to us. And Jesus reveals that healing is God's will. In John chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus says, I can of myself do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father who had sent me. We know from this that Jesus came to reveal the will of the Father, to show us how good 
our Heavenly Father is. In all his earthly ministry, not even once did Jesus turn away any person from him saying, it is not God's will for you to be healed. Or God wants you to be sick so that you can learn some deep spiritual truths. In the Gospels we see that everyone who came to Jesus in faith was healed, they received. We see that Jesus was moved with compassion when he saw the sick, and that is why he healed them. God's nature has not changed even today. If he healed in gospel times because of his compassion, today he still has compassion on the sick, and today he still heals. Let me give you some other reasons why you can believe that it is God's will for you to be healed. John 10 verse 10 says, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Sickness is not abundant life. God wants us to have life and to have it abundantly enjoying the blessing of his healing and health. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. The word of God brings healing. Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5 says, Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. In verse 4, the word grieves in the Hebrew is the word koli, which literally means physical sickness. And the word sorrows is the Hebrew word makob, which literally means physical pains. So if we carefully read Isaiah 53 verse 4 and 5, we should read it this way. Surely he had borne our sicknesses and carried our pains, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The word healed is the word rafa, which refers to physical healing. And the Bible says that because of the stripes that came upon Jesus on the cross, we have been healed. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The Bible says here that Jesus went about healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Sickness is demonic oppression. God sent Jesus and then anointed him in order to heal people. This tells us that God is not the source of sickness. There was no sickness in creation, and in salvation, God has made provision for healing. The word salvation, which is the Greek word soteria, literally means forgiveness of sins, deliverance from temporal danger, preservation, healing and health, rescue, well-being, prosperity. So the word salvation means God's saving grace for the total man, spirit, soul, and body. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, Jesus told his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that there is no sickness in heaven. And Jesus said, Pray for God's will in heaven to come on the earth. There is also power in the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow 
every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. We know that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21, the Bible says that Jesus has been raised far above every principality and power and dominion and far above every other name that is named. So Jesus' name is above every name. Cancer is a name. TB is a name. Every name must bow to Jesus. Every sickness must bow to Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Healing is God's will for your life. I am the God that He led thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. God that he led thee I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and I healed your disease I am the Lord your healer God that he led thee I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and I healed your disease I am the Lord your I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, I am the Lord.
God is a healer. As you listen to these scriptures, I want you to see that God is truly a healer. He is a good God who loves you and who wants to bless you because of what Jesus did for you on the cross. Many people accuse God of making them sick. We often say when we are sick, why are you doing this to me, O Lord? But the truth is, God does not put sickness on people. He is a loving God. He is a loving Father who wants to protect us and heal us. Let these scriptures that I read bring faith into your heart and convince you that our God is a healer. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 And said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight, give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. God says that He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who is our healer. God is a healer, not a destroyer. It is His nature to heal. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15 And the Lord will take away from you all sickness, and will afflict you with none of the terrible diseases of Egypt which you have known, but will lay them on all those who hate you. Jeremiah 30, verse 17 For I will restore health unto you, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. Jeremiah 33, verse 6 Behold, I will bring it health and healing. I will heal them and reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. Psalm 145, verses 8 to 9 The Lord is gracious and full of compassion and slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all and His tender mercies are over all His works. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. And what are His benefits? Verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and healeth all thy diseases. Forgiveness of sins comes from God and so does healing of sicknesses. Psalm 147, verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Psalms 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God is a good shepherd. He protects and he preserves his sheep. Psalm 30, verse 2 O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Psalm 34, verse 19 Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3 The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me, to preach good tidings unto the meek. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. 3 John chapter 1, verse 2 Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Romans 8, verse 32 He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, 
how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And God wants to heal you. Matthew chapter 7 verse 11 If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, not give good things to them that ask him? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. The Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 91 verses 10 to 16 No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And lastly, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Let these scriptures bring faith and strength into your heart. We know that God never changes. His nature is unchanging. He is a healer, and He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If He healed in Bible times, then even today He heals. You hold my every moment You come my raging seas You walk with me through fire And heal all my disease I trust in you I trust in you I believe you're my healer I believe you are all I need I believe you're my portion I believe you're more than enough for me Jesus, you're all I need You hold my every moment you come my raging seas You walk with me through fire And heal all my disease 
I trust in you. I trust in you. I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. I believe you're my potion. I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. I believe you're my potion. I believe. You're more than enough for me Jesus, you're all I need Nothing is impossible for you Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible for you You hold my world in your hands Nothing is impossible for you Nothing is impossible Nothing is impossible for you You hold my world in your hands I believe you're my healer I believe you are all I need I believe you're my potion I believe you're more than enough for me Jesus, you're all I need Jesus, you're all I need Many people struggle in their faith and thought life whether they are qualified and good enough to receive the blessing of healing. They are filled with thoughts of guilt, condemnation or inferiority, thinking that they are not good enough to be healed because they have not been good enough, because they have not kept some promise or vows to God, or because they have failed God and sinned in some area of their life, or because they have not been perfect. From the scriptures we know that healing is a grace of God. That means that God heals because He is a good God. He is a healer and above all because Jesus paid the price for our sins and our salvation. He does not heal because we have been good or because we deserve to be healed by our good works or our perfection. No matter what your past or what you feel you have done or the guilt you are dealing with, let these scriptures build faith in your heart that there is abundance of grace from God towards you for your healing. Luke chapter 5 verses 17 to 20 and verses 25 to 26. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find out how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, 
they went up on the house top and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The gospel of Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ, is the power of God unto salvation. And the word salvation means forgiveness of sins, but it also means healing for the body or for the soul and the mind, deliverance from addictions, deliverance from the power of Satan. The word salvation also means wholeness. It means rescue. It means to be redeemed from every curse. And the Bible says all of this is in the grace of the gospel and for those who believe. The good news of the gospel is that healing is available. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. The Bible says Jesus bore our sins, and not only our sins, but he also bore our sickness and our pains on the cross. We know that in grace, we are forgiven completely. Colossians chapter 1 verse 14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 says, And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. The Bible says that God has forgiven us of all our trespasses. We should not be under any condemnation about whether we are qualified to be healed. Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 and 13 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us. The Father has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. In the grace of Jesus Christ, because we are forgiven of all our sins, we are qualified for every blessing. Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law of the law. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. And sickness is part of the curse of the law that we see in the scriptures. We have been redeemed from the curse of the law so that the blessing of Abraham is upon our life today. Acts chapter 14 verse 8 to 10. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. And what was Paul speaking? He was speaking the gospel. Paul, observing him intently, and seeing that he had faith to be healed, 
say it with a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. And he leaped and walked. The hearing of the gospel brought faith into his heart. The message of God's grace and forgiveness brought faith into his heart and he received his healing. Acts chapter 13 verses 38 to 39 Therefore let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. That is what Paul was preaching everywhere he went, that through Jesus is preached to us the forgiveness of sins. That is the grace of God. In hearing the gospel, people received faith not only to be saved from sins, but also to be healed in their bodies. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. God is not condemning you. If you are a believer, there is no condemnation on your life. There should be no expectation of bad things that would come upon you. Why? Because you are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 32. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? This is the grace of God. He did not spare his own son, but gave him for you and for me. How then can God not freely give us all things? Is healing greater than Jesus? Is blessings greater than Jesus? No. So if God could give us his son, which is his best, why won't he heal you in your sickness right now? Romans chapter 8 verse 15 For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. You see, God is a Father. He's a good Father. Release your faith right now that God is your Father and He's not judging you or He's not putting sickness upon you. Romans chapter 5, verses 7 to 8. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the awesome grace of God, that while we were still sinners, while we were still lost, Christ died for us. God's love was given when we were most undeserving. And if Christ has forgiven you, and I believe the greatest blessing you and I can ever receive is forgiveness. So if Christ has forgiven us, why will he not heal us? Healing is a grace of God. Well, you may be thinking right now, if it is God's will for me to be healed, why am I still sick? Why does not God just go ahead and heal me? You see, God will heal. He has the ability and the willingness to heal. But you and I have a part to play, and that is to believe. Every blessing of God comes by His grace through our believing. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, For by grace we have been saved through faith. 
our salvation, which is through grace, which comes by His grace, is received through our faith. So even healing, which is a blessing from God, is received through our faith. As you listen to these scriptures, I want you to have faith in your heart that God is going to heal you. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The gift of God, which is salvation, which comes freely by His grace, is received through our faith, our personal belief in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. You see, it is God's will for every man and woman on this earth to be saved, because Jesus died for them. However, they do not get saved just like that automatically. They have to hear the good news and believe in the gospel in order to have faith to be saved. Even so in healing. By grace we have been saved means that we have been healed through our faith. So only believe and you will receive. Mark chapter 5 verses 25 to 31 and verse 34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, and had suffered many things for many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. I want you to notice that she heard about Jesus. So she heard some words which brought faith into her heart because she said, If I touch his clothes, I shall be made well. So faith came into her heart. Verse 29, Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitudes thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? Verse 34, And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Her faith caused her to receive healing when she touched Jesus. Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 47, and verses 51 to 52. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then he called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. Throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Luke chapter 17, verse 12 and verses 15 to 19. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood far off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? 
Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer. Jesus said, If we have faith as a mustard seed, we can say to this mountain, Sickness can be a mountain in your life. But if you have faith, nothing will be impossible for you. Acts chapter 2 verse 21 And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word saved here means will be forgiven, healed, delivered, rescued, made whole. So if you call on the Lord in faith, you will be healed. John chapter 14 verses 13 to 14 says, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Healing is something you can ask God for in the name of Jesus. Matthew 18 verse 19 Again I say to you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. If you ask, and if you ask with another believer, God promises that it will be done whatever you ask. You can ask for healing. Mark 11 verses 22 to 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For shortly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Jesus says, when you pray, and if you pray for healing, believe that you receive. That means believe you receive your healing the moment you pray. And if you believe, you will have your healing. So believing comes before having. That is how faith operates. So right now, I want to pray with you. As I pray, I want you to believe that you are going to receive. I want you in faith to lay your hand on that part of the body which is sick. And even as I pray over you, I want you to receive by faith. Come, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for healing over this person that is listening to this city. Whatever sickness is afflicting his body, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over that sickness and I command that sickness to leave his body. Sickness, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I command you to leave his body right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, in your name, I release healing grace I release healing anointing upon him even right now, even right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now just receive. Believe you have received. And I want you right now to start giving thanks to God to start giving glory to God, to start thanking Him in faith for the healing and the grace that has been released into your life. Come on, give Him thanks right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Lord, I give you the glory. 
I give the praise for you are my healer, for you are my deliverer, for you are my savior. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be healed. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be made whole. That is the promise of God to you. Now receive that and believe it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Believe that you have received. I encourage you to listen to this CD as often as you can. God bless you. And if you have received a healing in your body, please write to us and let us know the testimony of how God touched your life. God bless you. I believe you have been blessed through this CD. As you listen to this song, I encourage you to praise and worship God from your heart. In Acts 16, verse 25, the Bible says, About midnight, when Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of all the jail shook, all the doors flew open, and the chains of all were pulled loose. Praise is powerful. Worship releases God into our situation. So I encourage you, worship along with this song and worship the great and mighty and awesome God whom we serve, in whom nothing is impossible. Be blessed. You deserve the glory and the honor Lord, we lift our hands in worship As we lift your holy name You deserve the glory and the honor Lord, we lift our hands in worship As we lift your holy name For you are great You the miracle so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you for you are great, you the miracle so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you. deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor Lord we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name for you are great you the miracle so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you the miracle so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you There is
is no 